Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where today I want to talk about cybersecurity innovation and the world of investments too. Because today's guest is a managing partner at YL Ventures, who you may have seen on the news recently talking about cyber reason and raising $200 million in funding from SoftBank and also achieving an incredible valuation of $1.5 billion and securing themselves as unicorn status. So YL Ventures funds and supports brilliant Israeli tech entrepreneurs from seed to lead and they're based in Silicon Valley and Tel Aviv and has a 260 million dollar focus on deep technology sectors that specialize in cybersecurity and while ventures also accelerates the evolution of portfolio companies via strategic advice and US based operational execution and they do all that by leveraging a powerful network of chief information security officers and global industry leaders it's a great story. So let's get him on the show and find out more. So a massive warm welcome to the show, John. Can you tell the listeners a little more about who you are and what you do? Yeah, thanks, Neil. Uh, so uh, my name is John Brennan. I'm a partner with YL Ventures. Uh, so what we do is seed stage investing in early stage cybersecurity teams coming out of Israel. So our, our whole strategy is really focused on marrying great early stage technologies in Israel and cybersecurity uh, with great global end markets and and mainly uh, our our go-to-market strategy is focused around the U.S. Uh, I've been with the firm for a little over two years. My background is a a mix of consulting and and venture capital. Um, I I spend a lot of time in Israel meeting with potential founders, meeting with our founders, and then I, I spend a large amount of my time actually working with our earliest stage uh, executive team. So kind of that seed to a sprint that is so critical. Uh, that's an area where we spend a lot of time hands on. And that's probably uh, one of the most rewarding parts of, of what I do here at Wild. And like I said, Wild Ventures funds and supports brilliant Israeli tech entrepreneurs from seed to lead. And there is a fantastic startup scene out there. But you guys are based in Silicon Valley and Tel Aviv and manage $260 million focused on deep technology sectors and specialize specifically in cybersecurity. But can you tell me a little bit more about how Wild Ventures accelerates that evolution of portfolio companies? but while also leveraging powerful network of chief information security officers and those global industry leaders, because it seems quite unique what you're doing here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what, what you touched on at the beginning, this, uh, this model of having both an office in Silicon Valley and an office in Israel is really important. It's really critical to, to what we're doing. So as I mentioned, our whole strategy is to identify each year the very, very best teams in cybersecurity that are, ta- that are tackling big problems. And we want to help accelerate their progress uh, going to market, which essentially, in most cases, means going to market in the U.S. And so for us to do that effectively, it's really important for us to be on the ground in Israel. So our Tel Aviv office uh, actually has 10 people. Uh, we, we spend a lot of time there uh, as part of the community, meeting with the community, making sure that we, we are providing value even before we, we, we invest. Uh, and so that, that front end of our deal flow and our sourcing is all run out of the uh, Israeli office. At the same time, while we, we feel that we need to be part of the Israeli ecosystem to identify great opportunities and, and win them, it's actually really important for us to be in the U.S. as well because that's where a lot of the go-to-market value uh, happens. So we have four people here in Silicon Valley. Um, I would say that uh, we, we work together on every deal. So no, no one person owns any deal. Uh, currently, the, the, boards, uh, the board seats are split up amongst our partners. But uh, say, for example, a company on wh- where I'm not on the board, uh, take Orca Security, for example, uh, doing full stack visibility for, for cloud environments. Uh, even though I'm not on the board there, I still work really closely with Avi and Gil, the two co-founders, on their go-to-market strategy on their early pipeline. And so uh, the way we built our firm is so that each person, each individual, whether they're in Israel or in the U.S., can really bring what they're best at uh, to to each company. 
And so that goes uh, across many different verticals, many different areas. Uh, of course, introducing them to customers. Uh, we have our, our CISO advisory network, uh, about 60 chief information security officers, uh, re- large companies like Walmart and Nike, uh, companies in, in the U.S. that we can really help uh, not just get customers and, and find design partners, but actually also get really uh, broad and deep uh, feedback on what the, our founders need to be building. So de-risking or, or mitigating some of that risk about going to market and potentially you know, avoiding building something great, but building something great that isn't quite what the market wants. Uh, we have a lot of work we do around finance, uh, marketing, and messaging. I think there are about 700 companies at RSA last year, uh, or this year, I should say. Uh, and so differentiating yourself in a really crowded market where CISOs are getting pinged with 200, 300 emails every single day is really important. And we kind of, we like to call it our, uh, our bear hug of value add for all of our companies. <laughs> and that really starts across both offices even before we, we invest. And you guys have quite a track record too that includes successful high portfolio company acquisitions by major corporations. And is that something that you can expand on just to help set the scene for anybody tuning in and hearing about you guys for the first time? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, of course, our, our most recent investment uh, was, was our cloud-native security company, Twistlock. Uh, was sold to Palo Alto Networks uh, earlier this year for $410 million. Uh, previous to that, we had also, uh, a couple of years ago, so, sold uh, Hexadite, uh, automated, incident resp- automated uh, incident response to Microsoft. So two nice exits, two large acquirers, one a, a very clear-cut uh, security vendor, one of the largest in the world, um, and the other one a much larger corporation, but, the you know, for example, Microsoft, uh, within their their organization, security is actually a really big part of what they do as well. And so when we talk about opening up the U.S. market to our founders, of course, they're really interested in finding advisors and early customers, but we take a really broad view of that. So we get them thinking, we get our founders thinking at a really early stage about speaking with other experts. So that includes corporate development teams and business development teams for some of these larger uh, eventual acquirers. Uh, it includes talking to investment bankers, getting a really broad view on the market. We work with some really great uh, investment banks, that's especially those that specialize in cybersecurity. So our, when we talk about why we're in the U.S., that's actually a big part of it because we're looking at the entire ecosystem, not just the short term. Uh, and so that's something that we spend quite a bit of time doing. We're very proud uh, of, the, of uh, Ben and, and the entire Twistlock team for, for their recent exit. And, you know, when, when we talk about the kinds of companies we, we hope to support and the way that we hope to support them, I think Twistlock is actually a really great example of that. And one of the reasons why I was excited to get you on the podcast today was after hearing our cyber reason is is raising $200 million in funding from SoftBank. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that story, just for anyone that missed the announcement? Yeah, absolutely. So cyber reason, a uh, great company uh, out of Israel, uh, originated in Israel. Um, they had a relationship with SoftBank for a long time, which, you know, is is always nice uh, from an investor perspective. You know, we, we see it a lot, actually, with corporate VC arms. A lot of times uh, corporates will come in and, and participate in rounds with our companies once they have a, especially if their business units are, are utilizing the product and they can really understand it from a customer perspective. Um, what, what I would say is, you know, the, right now in the security market, um, it's a really hot market because the, the demand is huge. So if you, if you look at different metrics and even with a potential recession coming, I think you, you see some really strong indicators on cybersecurity spending. And so if you can stay independent, which is quite hard to do actually in security, a lot of companies get, get uh, acquired, such as Twistlock, uh, which we, we think could have gone longer, but you know, they had a great opportunity and it was a really great outcome for everybody. Uh, so, so in the case of Cyber is a large independent company with, with the ability to get some, a really large capital infusion behind it. And I think what you hear a lot about in the security space is being best in breed or being one of the best in breed is really important. And so I think that's what you're seeing there is a company with a lot of momentum, with, with a great team, great technology uh, that has put themselves in a position that, you know, a, a billion dollar valuation, uh, you know, a unicorn in security is not so common. And so it's a great story for them. And I think a great indicator of the potential of some of these com- security companies, hopefully some of the ones in, in our portfolio. And I also read that Cyber Reason has officially reached unicorn status with an incredible 1.5 billion valuation. Uh, did that take you by surprise? So, you know, I, I don't know so much about, you know, I don't, I don't know how that the round was closed or what the discussions were. So yeah. I can't speak too specifically to that. But what I will say 
is I think we're seeing in the security market a lot of maturation. So you look at a company like CrowdStrike and their IPO and how successful that's been. I think uh, in general, we're going to see a lot, uh, a lot of great large outcomes in cybersecurity. Now, I can tell you that you know, we've looked at the numbers and, and we certainly don't expect to see a ton of billion dollar plus companies. Uh, however, I think if you, if you look in that kind of 200 to $300 million range up to the six, seven, $800 million range, I think we have the potential to see a lot of great outcomes in that space. And part of it is because some of these larger vendors are really looking to add to their security portfolios and they're feeling the demand from customers. Uh, it's a really crowded market out there, as I mentioned. And so as some of these larger vendors think about filling in some of their gaps, uh, they're willing to pay really strategic prices. And so I think in general, we're going to see more, more on the acquisition side, more in the more M&As in the range I mentioned. But there certainly will be uh, some, some unicorns like Cyberreason, as you mentioned. And, and certainly we're, we're hopeful that, you know, we, we, I believe we have some companies with that kind of potential. I, I won't put any of them on the spot, but I think we see in terms of some of the markets that they're attacking and, and the, really the, the growth that's possible ahead of them, if they elect to stay independent uh, long enough, I think we'll see more and more of that. And there are so many big topics and trends in cybersecurity at the moment, such as identity management and zero trust models. But I'm curious, what excites you about the world of cybersecurity innovation and indeed investments around that field at the moment? Yeah, so, so you mentioned a couple of them. You know, uh, zero trust, certainly a, a, a buzzword these days. But I think uh, w- within that buzzword, there's a lot of interesting opportunity, especially when you talk about identity access management. Um, some of the areas that, that we're particularly interested in. So uh, automation and orchestration, uh, it's an area we're paying a lot of attention to. So if you think about uh, from the customer perspective, we try to be very customer driven. And so when we speak with chief information security officers, we hear a lot about uh, their their struggles or their challenges, both with talent, uh, recruiting and retention. So a lot of, uh, by various measures, there's all kinds of, or, there are different measures for what the shortage of security talent out there is. Um, one number I've heard is 3 million, but regardless, just anecdotally speaking with these customers, it is a problem. Uh, talent is an issue for these teams. So if you combine that with very complex ecosystems, uh, anything you can do to automate and orchestrate processes that are currently very manual for a security team is very interesting. So we actually have a company in, in uh, the vulnerability management space, Vulcan Cyber, doing continuous vulnerability remediation. So what they do is they, they help uh, security teams prioritize vulnerabilities in their environment, and then they actually automate and orchestrate the remediation process. So uh, maybe they're, they're suggesting a patch, and, and they help them automate that. Maybe they need to change the configuration uh, on a firewall, maybe because potentially the, uh, the patch is not the right solution. And so what we see there is uh, vulnerability management is not a new problem. Uh, vulnerability remediation is not a new space. But we've, we saw an opportunity to integrate across a lot of different processes, and in this case, a lot of different teams, including security and IT. Uh, we were able to uh, automate and orchestrate a what some might call a blocking and tackling uh, type issue. And so that's something that's really interesting to us. So different areas within that. Uh, I would say a couple of other um, trends that we're seeing. So the proliferation of IoT of connected devices. We have a company, uh, Exonius, which actually just this morning announced a $20 million Series B round. Uh, And so what they're doing is they're simply the the first step of what they're doing is giving you visibility into all the connected devices in your ecosystem. So it's really actually it's a really hard problem to solve. And you can't uh, you can't protect what you can't see is is what they like to say. So that's another area, kind of the blocking and tackling uh, that some of these problems that have been around for many, many years uh, that still need solutions. And and that's stuff we love. We love to uh, to invest in. Um, you, uh, one other area I'll mention is, uh, you talked about, uh, identity access management closely related to that and certainly intertwined is data governance. So, uh, of course you have GDPR, CCPA. So helping, um, companies understand where their critical data is and how to protect it, especially as, uh, as companies are moving more and more to the cloud and it's getting more complex. Uh, that's something that we're particularly interested in right now as well. And you guys are enjoying incredible success at the moment. So I'd also like to ask, can we expect more from you in the future? And assumingly we do. I mean, how do you see this industry continuing to evolve over the next few years? Yeah, so, you know, I I certainly hope so. I think uh, a couple of parts of our strategy are a little bit different than the way others invest. And so I think actually um, that helps explain our view on the market. So uh, for a venture firm, we're very concentrated. 
Uh, so we're investing right now. We're just finishing up investing out of a $75 million fund, our third fund. Uh, and we, we recently announced our, our next fund, our fourth fund, which is $120 million. So depending on who you're comparing us to or what the benchmark is, you can either think of that as, as quite large or quite small. Uh, what I would say is in that $75 million fund, we have seven companies. And then in the $120 million fund, we're targeting 10. So very concentrated portfolio. We target large ownerships in our company with large checks. We have a high conviction model where we go in very early to get large ownerships with the very, very best teams. And you know, probably only two or three teams per year uh, we're going to invest in. And so what that allows us to do, it aligns our, our incentives with those of our founders uh, by encouraging good behavior, both in terms of operational support. Uh, so because we have a small portfolio, we don't expect to lose 60, 70, 80% of our deals. We work really closely operationally intensively with each of our teams, hopefully getting to them to great series A rounds, great series B rounds when we can step back and to be uh, a little bit more tradi uh, traditional, very active, but traditional board members. Uh, and so because of that strategy, I think early on, we mitigate some of that early go-to-market risk, which will, will hopefully lower our, our quote-unquote loss rates. Uh, and then because we're only doing security and because our network is so focused in that space, as companies scale, we can add a lot of value there. And so what I think you're going to see is, is as I mentioned, uh, security is a very acquisitive market. I think it's hard to, to underwrite to or expect billion-dollar-plus outcomes to expect IPOs. But we expect to see uh, this acquisitive environment really continue into the future. And, and especially as you have great companies like CrowdStrike, which is now public, uh, you have to imagine that they, with, with the cash they have in the bank, they'll start making acquisitions as well. And so uh, we, we often talk about, we hear in the market, some of, our, some of our potential competitors or other investors pull back from security because it's so complex. And we actually like that dynamic. We're happy uh, for the haystack to be bigger because we have the resources and the focus to dig through that haystack and, and find those two to three needles every year that we think are really key to, to generating great returns for our investors. And for any entrepreneurs or startup founders listening that want to make them that wants to make themselves more attractive for funding, but they are finding out the hard way that there there is no such thing as an instruction manual for this uh, world that they they find themselves in. So, what are the common missteps and catalysts for success that they should be looking out for, in your opinion? Yeah, so I I think the number one thing that we see. Uh, that, that we see with really early stage founders, especially the, the type of founders we're working with. So we work with really just amazing, brilliant technologists generally, uh, most of whom are coming out of the, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, which we like to call the best cybersecurity school in the world. And so our founders, um, and I think in security in general, uh, tend to have quite a bent towards uh, being technical. And so I think it's very natural for that thing that you're best at or wherever your expertise is to focus on that. And so uh, going, building a, a security company uh, with a tech first mindset can be a little bit tricky. Um, we you know, just to give you an example, oftentimes we'll see a, a, an investment deck, a presentation uh, where the first five or six slides are all about the technology. So let's say it's, uh, there's AI, uh, which is all, all, also a, quite a buzzword as we all know. Uh, let's say that there's some AI and they're very proud of that and it's, it's brilliant but the first six slides are about their algorithms and how it's special without even actually talking about the problem that's being addressed and how they're solving the problem. And especially when uh, you think about, you know, speaking to customers, of course, you know, we're, we're talking here about pitching uh, venture capitalists for fundraising, but we're very customer driven. So we, we think uh, along the same line. So before we find out how you're doing it, which is critical and very important, and we, we do a lot of work around uh, intellectual property and making sure that our companies can, can be defensible in the long run, uh, first, we want to understand what problem are you addressing? Where are you going to get budget from? Uh, are you a hammer looking for a nail? Or are you looking to, to hammer that nail that you've listened to the market for and really understood uh, where the gap is and where you can build a big company? So I think, uh, you know, the, like I said, it, it's not to discount the technology because it's a mission critical part of what we invest in. Uh, but really, before we get into that, we need to understand What's the problem being addressed and what is your value proposition and how is it different than others? So I think that at a high level is something that, um, that I think is really important. You know, closely related, uh, I often tell our founders, I have no doubt you can build something brilliant. Uh, 
a big part of my job is bridging part of that gap to the US and into the target market and making sure that you don't build something brilliant that no one wants to buy because ultimately we're investing in businesses that need to, to have large outcomes. And so hopefully through our network, through our advisor network, again, 60 uh, chief information security officers uh, in the US who can give real time feedback on, on to really early stage ideas before the founders have invested time in, in even building anything, I think that really helps our process. And I think it's part of what draws founders to work with us because we, again, we have this dual center of gravity model uh, and we're able to do that. And we have the resources to, to do that before we even invest. So it's actually part of our diligence process is going is actually working alongside founders uh, to help them avoid some of these missteps. So it's almost more of a partnership than an evaluation process. And that's, that's very purposeful. Fantastic. Well, a huge thank you for taking the time to come and speak with me today. But before I do let you go, could I ask that you just remind everyone listening where they can find you guys online? And if, if anyone is left with any additional questions, what's the best way of reaching your team? Yeah, absolutely. So, so anyone can reach me, uh, john at wildventures.com. That's quite easy. Uh, I, of course, LinkedIn is a great way to reach out. I am on Twitter at uh, jbrennan09. Uh, any of those mediums, uh, you can reach out to me on uh, or my fellow teammates as well. Uh, I know that uh, I'm quite responsive, uh, even if it's uh, if it's uh, not a fit. I'm always happy to take a look and, and give some feedback. And so I think um, those are all great ways to reach us. Wildventures.com, you can see the entire team, uh, as well as our different roles. You know, we, we didn't dig into it too much, but we have... Uh, we have a, a lot of different skill sets on our team, and we have a VP of marketing, uh, Sharon, over in Israel, who has a team working with her. We have uh, analysts in Israel. We have associates here in the U.S. We have partners in both locations. So whatever it is you're interested in, we probably have someone to match up against that. Uh, and let us know. We're always happy to help. Excellent. Well, I think today's conversation is going to be so valuable to startup founders and entrepreneurs, both in and outside of the cybersecurity industry, but also for everyone else. I think any conversation that covers cybersecurity, innovation, and investments is going to have more than a few valuable takeaways as well. So a big thank you for taking the time to come and speak with me today. Thanks again. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Neil. Based in Silicon Valley and Tel Aviv, Wild Ventures has a $260 million focus on deep technology sectors. And like we said at the beginning of the show, specializes in cybersecurity. And there was so much that I loved about this conversation. And as someone that loves to niche down, I'm going to send a message out to the universe here now and say if you're a startup founder in the cybersecurity industry, whether you're in Tel Aviv or outside of Tel Aviv, email me. Let me see if I can introduce you to a guy that knows a guy and even get you on this show and help you share your story too. You can email me directly at techblogwriter at outlook.com. You can tweet me at Neil C. Hughes or pop by my website techblogwriter.co.uk where you can find all the podcast episodes, how you can work with me and so much more. But that's it for today. I'll return tomorrow at the same time. So... Don't be late. <laughs> a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.